So now I want to um, uh, highlight why I'm using uh, the uh, smartphone as uh, a basic uh, reference system for, for electronics. So this is from uh, a, um, a report in December 2017. Uh, the global integrated security market uh, was close to $300 billion in 2017. And then you can, uh, let's say, so this is the global market for integrated cities. Okay, so we're basically considering all uh, semiconductors, because in addition to integrated circuits, you also have some discrete uh, uh, electronic components, discrete transistors for power applications and so on, but it's a, it's a separate market. So, and here in this, in this plot, they are divided by application, by use case. Okay, and uh, uh, then how do you read this, uh, this plot? This is the share of uh, the, the, the total sales in integrated circuits for each application. So, for example, cell phones are close to 25%. Standard PCs are a little less than 20%, and so on. And then on the x-axis, you see the um, compound annual growth rate, CAGR, compound annual growth rate, uh, which is uh, part uh, uh, based on actual numbers, part uh, uh, prediction, in the years 2016-2021. So from two years ago to the next three years. Uh, so, uh, for example, 15% means that you expect a 15% increase every year for, on average, for five years. So zero means that the market is constant, okay? So, so you have the, faster, uh, the, 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 the fastest growth here, and here you have a negative growth, okay? So if you look at these numbers, it's pretty, pretty clear. Of course, the most important category is integrated circuits to be used in cell phones because you have a higher share. Then the second one is standard PC. The third one is <clears throat> integrated circuits for automotive applications, okay? The other thing is that this is increasing faster. So you can expect that this part is then, in the next few years, increasing in size. This is increases less, this is in, or, or, uh, still less. So already you can say that uh, uh, cell phones are using more integrated circuits than standard PCs already now, and then the distance is going to increase in the future because using cell phone is increasing faster than using PC, okay? So up to now, the main category is this one, and then you have to look in the future for these two ones. This, the automotive is, is important because you know that cars are using more and more electronic support. That is something that we, 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 we understand each day. And then this Internet of Things is important because it is a category which is uh, actually uh, consisting of many different things. Part is infrastructure, part is uh, um, chips that go onto mobile devices, mobile sensors, and so on. So it's a, it's a quite broad category. In previous years, the same report did not have Internet of Things as a single category. They had wireless infrastructure and wireless sensors as separate categories. Now it's a, it's a way of, of putting everything together. You see, all the rest is uh, less and less important. Military applications are, are not that important. Traditionally, they were the main, uh, let's say, um, 
from a point of view of, 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 uh, of market size, they were the main application of electronic systems. Okay. Now, military, of course, are negligible. Game consoles are going down. Tablets are going down. Because basically all the market for game console and tablets is being uh, eaten by, by uh, cell phones. Okay. Yeah, the rest is negligible. So this is why I'm looking at cell phones. Uh, a few years back, PCs were the most important market. Now things have changed. And now we are considering integrated circuits. Integrated circuits do not mean complete electronic systems. Okay? Because if I consider a, a, a cell phone, of course, I have much more than just integrated circuits. I have a display, I have antennas, I have a lot of other components. I have a case and so on. But they, um, uh, especially in terms of cost, are an increase, let's say, uh, represent an increasing share of the cost of uh, an electronic system and therefore of the overall market. Oh, and this is increasing. You look at this uh, uh, plot from the same, uh, the same report. This is the uh, value, dollar value, of uh, the semiconductor content uh, in electronic systems as a function of time. So from 97 to 17, 18, the, so the red is the future, of course. This is report from December 17. And you know that on average, the share of the value that is, uh, uh, let's say, included in integrated circuits <coughs> is increasing, now it's close to 30%. And still it's going to go up. Okay, so it's, a, it's a, a really a significant part of the overall value that we are considering. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is an obvious graph. I just want to, to I mean, oh, okay. Of course, you don't have to uh, remember the numbers. This is obvious, but it just it, it's useful to, to have an idea. This is not really recent. It's from 2015, actual numbers. And the important thing is the uh, component of, these are the smartphone unit sales and the share, the smartphone share of total cell phone shipments. This is, of course, what you expect. Look at the blue. Symbols here, already in 2015, 80% of cell phones were smartphones. So we are almost, of course, we are going to saturate at, at 100%, at close to 100%. So already we are close to that. And, and the number of, of pieces is very high. Already in 2015, in total, over four quarters was 1.5 billion devices because uh, the average life of a smartphone is two years so uh, the, these numbers uh, really mean a global market now the other reason why I want to focus on smartphones is that in terms of uh, uh, shipments uh, it already surpassed PCs. So this is the, the orange line. This is, of course, the year again. And these are the shipments of uh, quarter by quarter of uh, smartphones, iOS plus Android, OK, and uh, PCs. OK, so some point around 2011, there was, uh, uh, um, let's say, uh, uh, a change in first place. And, uh, yeah. And this is uh, partly due to the fact that the average life of a smartphone is two years, and the average life of a PC is five years. 
So they, they suckle much more, much more frequently. Okay, so it's, uh, it's, uh, this is an additional reason just to focus on, on smartphones. And uh, oh, this is more something like a, a curiosity. Uh, how, let's say, introduction of new technologies changes the market. Just I wanted to show you uh, this as a curiosity. Um, uh, these, uh, these are uh, sales of Japanese cameras, okay? So the orange line is uh, uh, analog cameras, okay? Classical cameras with a film, okay? Of course, they are increasing from the 50s uh, up to 97. That is the peak, and then they are going down. And what happens in this, uh, in this uh, time, basically it happens that you start to see an increase in the sale of uh, digital uh, cameras with, uh, um, with um, reflex lenses, basically, and with the, 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 the blue one, with, no, the, the, the black one, and then with fixed lenses here. So they start to, to go up here and here. So uh, two things. First, this is uh, a change in technology. At this point, people start to say, okay, these digital cameras are better than the analog ones, and then the market changes. Okay. Oh, but by the way, uh, around this year, digital cameras started to appear. Remember what I said before, that the new technology is always worse when, it, when, when the first time it, it, it appears. Uh, I, I was totally wrong on digital cameras. I said, okay, I, I saw the first digital cameras. I said, okay, they're terrible with respect to the analog ones. They're never going to, to I'm not going to change. Okay, because I, I was looking at, an, at a new technology with the eyes of the old one. The new technology was very poor. You had this, uh, these photographs with uh, uh, resolution of 700 points by 500, so very poor, bad colors, and so on. And I said, okay, that there's no way they're going to change, but of course, then technology could improve them. Everything changed. So I was at that time completely wrong. And the other thing that you should look is what is happening here. You see here, this is going down. The digital cameras are going down sharply. And this is basically because smartphones are good enough. And people are basically, let's say, happy with the smartphone cameras that they do not need uh, digital, specific digital cameras anymore. So the market is going down, but, but in, in a very uh, fast way especially for the fixed lenses that, of course, are the first one to be uh, completely overtaken by, by smartphone cameras. So th these changes are really uh, profound, they're important. And uh, okay, now what I want to do now, I took a relatively old phone uh, from two years ago, I, I just want to I just took some images from a tear down or from, uh, let's say, uh, I think oh, this was, I fixed it. Uh, you know, there are these websites in which you, you, you can see the photographs of different uh, uh, phones or other electronic equipments. Just I wanted to take some uh, photos from the iPhone 6 tear down to comment, in order to comment it with you to show you the various pieces that we are going to discuss in some more detail as far as the basic operation of the, of, of the component is concerned. Okay, I want, so I'm not interested that much in, in the iPhone 6, more or less uh, uh, all phones are, are, are similar 
and they have uh, similar components. This was, of course, a high-end phone at the time it came out. Uh, if you look at it now, most of the things are, are shared by also other uh, middle-level phones now. So it, it's a good example to discuss. So uh, you, you, need to, you need to consider that the, the, the device is extremely packed, and of course you know, and it has a large number of integrated circuits on board, very large number. So you open it, and then, okay, this is the display on one side, and this is a huge battery. Now, you need to be in this, in this order, uh, close to 2,000 milliampere hours. So this is the total capacity, current times the time. And uh, then this is the main board. It has an S shape, and it's a two-side board. You have chips on one side and on the other side. A lot of them. On top, you have a lot of antennas and uh, uh, the camera. Of course, you have, uh, uh, this is the, the back, so this is the rear-facing camera, which is, uh, uh, is here on this corner, and it's the high quality. And then you have a lot of antennas. You should consider that you typically have, uh, on normal phone, the Wi-Fi antenna, that is uh, uh, now often uh, a bifrequency antenna. It has a, uh, it's an antenna for both 2.45 gigahertz and 5, uh, 5.3 gigahertz. Then you have uh, a few cellular phone antennas for different frequencies. Then you have uh, the GPS antenna. And then sometimes you have the NFC antenna, the, antenna for the, the sort of antenna which is more an inductor for near field communication. So probably I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting something. Wi-Fi. Oh, no, uh, you have also the Bluetooth antenna. So Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, uh, cellular line, NFC, and GPS. They are not on chip, they are all on the same board, in different points on, on, on the chip. And that is, a, let's say, that is a very critical problem, the positioning of the antennas from an electromagnetic point of view, but we're not discussing that now. But still, it's, it's, a, it's important to consider that you have actually many different antennas and communication systems. Okay, this is the board, front side, and uh, you see you have many uh, chips on board. Let me just uh, mention you the main ones. Um, so, oh, the, the colors are added on top, uh, uh, as you can imagine. This is the uh, iPhone 6, so the main processor was called A8 at the time. And it was fabricated by TSMC with uh, a process that was called 20 nanometer CMOS. Actually, it was um, it was uh, a, a um, uh, probably I, I think I have a, a photographs later on. But A8 is a system on package. So in the same package here, that is something like. Uh, uh, the, the package is something like two by two centimeters. You have uh, the DRAM, one gigabyte of DRAM, and then on top of it, uh, you have, uh, no, the DRAM is on the top, and on the bottom you have the microprocessor. So, so DRAM plus microprocessor is in this package. Uh, this is the space for the SIM. And then the other large chips are all below here, and they are mainly related to um, 
to uh, communication. So this is the modem by Qualcomm. These are uh, the power amplifiers for transmission at different bands because cellular communication uses different bands. So you have different amplifier for all the possible different bands. And these are the old chips by Qualcomm, Skyworks, and Avago that are uh, companies that fabricate integrated circuits for, for uh, the, the, in this case, for the iPhone. Uh, Qualcomm, Skyworks, and Avago are what are called fabless companies. They design the chips, that the fabrication is done by external foundries, as I uh, mentioned before, for example, the companies that I have mentioned before, and then the sell chip. So the, the market is, uh, is uh, for companies is basically divided in two categories. You have the foundries on one, on one side that fabricate the chips, and you have the fabless company that are mainly concerned with design and sale. Okay. Uh, so you, you see how many you have. This is PAD means uh, power amplifier, power amplifier, power amplifier, power amplifier. These are different power amplifiers at different frequencies for communication. This is the modem. And this um, uh, black one is uh, an interesting uh, chip. It is the uh, six axis gyroscope and accelerometer combo. So the accelerometer is, is a sensor for acceleration in three directions, so accelerator along x, y, and z. And the, the gyroscope is a sensor of orientation in three directions, okay? These are used for different uh, functions. Of course, we will, I mean, discuss in detail how an accelerometer works and how a gyroscope works. But now I want to stress this aspect. Uh, in the previous uh, um, version of the iPhone, uh, the, F oh, 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 the iPhone 5, this chip was made by ST Microelectronics. In the iPhone 6, it was made by InventSense, which was an, an, let's say another company, an American company, that in the time has been bought by TDK. Okay? So it does not exist anymore as an independent company. But so uh, uh, the, uh, when ST Microelectronics lost the chip on the iPhone, it was panic mode totally. Because of course you have a chip which costs uh, something like $2, $3 per piece, but then you multiply it for something like uh, uh, 50, 60 million phones per year, and it's a huge market. So a, a, a spot on the, this, this uh, board means a lot for each individual company. Because it, it is really, even if uh, the, the, single, the, the, the cost of a single chip is not that high, you have then to multiply by a large number. So this is really, every, every, one, every one of these uh, spot is uh, a high value spot. Okay, so there's a place for the sensor, and actually there are, there are, two, there are two accelerometers on this board. One, I don't, I don't remember if I, uh, if I show it, but let, let, me, let me say it now. Uh, there is one for high precision that is to be used for, for games, typically, because you need a very high precision in terms of the orientation. And then there is another one, which is low precision, low power, to be used, for example, in order to sense the orientation of the screen to adjust the display, okay? And then, of course, the, the second one, low precision, is also low power because it, it, you have it always on. And then the high precision one, you have it on only when you need it, during, when you open the app, okay? And this is, I mean, this sort of things are the main differences from uh, between high-end phones and low-end phones. In a high-end phones, you have much better performance because you have multiple chips for different applications. So you have both the precision and the low power consumption. 
and and for example, if you if you look at a low end phone, you typically only have one accelerometer, and that's it. So either you have high precision, or you have low power consumption. And this is the front side. You have additional, addition. Okay, this is the low precision one. The Bosch sensor tech is the low precision um, accelerometer. And uh, again, you have uh, on the back other other chips. These are again for the uh, for the communication part. This is the envelope tracking I see. So it's for the baseband processing in communication. This is the antenna switch module and another power amplifier in midband. Uh, this is the back side. No, so this is the, the, the other, no. These are other chips on the front side. Sorry. Then this is the back side. L let me. Stress only the most the important parts. Uh, okay, the big piece here is the NAND flash. Okay, we need to. We are going to look at how this works. This is the memory, the flash you have on on chip. Uh, in this case, it was uh, a 16 gigabyte. Oh, it's uh, relatively uh, large for the time now. I mean. It's going to be probably larger by some disk. Uh, OK, this is a standard uh, flash memory manufacturer. NAND is the architecture of the memory, which is the, the most used architecture for flash memory. We're going to, to have a look at it in detail. And then uh, the other important things to mention, oh, this is interesting. Uh, this is. Uh, uh, a nice story. Uh, this is the power management uh, integrated circuit. So the yellow, uh, the power management integrated circuit is an important uh, uh, integrated circuit that you have in all mobile devices. And it basically has two functions. Uh, on the one hand, it has to control the charging of the battery. So when you connect uh, the, the phone to the uh, power supply, then there is a processor which, uh, let's say, controls the charging of the battery from the uh, power supply. And then the, the same chip provides all the uh, voltage supply to all the circuits on the board. So from the battery, it provides the power supply to all the chips on board. So, I mean, every... every um, Cheap, uh, every block needs its own particular power supply. The display, for example, needs a high voltage. The memory needs a different type of voltage. The microprocessor, an even different one, and so on. And this chip has to provide everything. And, and um, this is interesting because this, uh, uh, this it says Apple, Apple Dialog. And in practice, it has been fabricated by Dialog Semiconductor. <coughs> On purpose for Apple. Okay. And uh, uh, Dialog Semiconductor is, is uh, uh, actually uh, close to here in Livorno. There's a relatively large design center from Dialog Semi Semiconductor with uh, uh, 80 engineers, and they basically design these things okay, for, for, for the iPhone. For the iPhone and the iPad, basically, uh, they, they, there's a group which is able to. Uh, design, not fabricate, design a complete uh, uh, power management circuit for, for mobile applications. And, and uh, Apple is their main customer. Okay, so uh, it's a large company in Liv with about 1,000 people, not extremely large, but with about 1,000 people, 80 of them are in Livorno. So it's a, it's a, I mean, it's, it's a story that is not... Uh, uh, typically known, but uh, uh, this is possible because of the of the uh, business model that these companies have. Also, Dialog is a fabless company; they do the design, then the fabrication is done by TSMC in Taiwan, and then they sell the product uh, everywhere. They in the, in the particular business model they have, they made a contract with uh, one customer for a large number of uh, chips and then design the chip on purpose. 
So they have a contract, for example, with Apple for 100 million chips, and they, of course, design it and, and make and make the, uh, the and let TSMC make the chip for them. And uh, yeah. Uh, okay. And we are we are going to to have a look uh, at how power management ICs work. Uh, other interesting things here. Well, more or less chips for mobile communications. There is another power management IC, which is by Qualcomm. It's separated. Is the it, it's a very uh, this is a, a different thing for the radio, especially the part uh, the, for the cellular communication. Qualcomm typically uses its own power management ICs because they have special requirements in terms of disturb and and uh, and uh, electromagnetic uh, compatibility, and so they want to use their own chip there. And of course, they have a spot on the board. Okay. Oh, I just want to discuss this issue. So every piece has a cost, okay? And uh, this is interesting because it, I, I mean, I think one can be curious to know w what is the cost in terms of components and what are the most expensive components. So this is the iPhone 6. At the time it went out, the estimated costs of component was a little more than $200. The, the phone sold for something close to $700 in, 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 in the US. And uh, one third of it was component costs, according to these estimates. And uh, the most important component thermal cost is the display, which is this one. The second one is the processor, this one. And the third one should be this uh, uh, green one, which is uh, uh, chips for uh, communication. This is the baseband processor, chips for the digital communication part. And then, OK, this is other. So the rest is not that costly. The camera is not negligible. This is the camera. This is the NAND, the flash. Power management is $7, but it's not, not just the chip power management. It's, uh, you have two power management chips plus the audio and so on. So still microprocessor and display. Now things have changed a bit because the cost of memory has increased a lot. For example, you see here that, that the DRAM is uh, not really expensive here. But uh, now costs uh, have gone up. So <coughs> it's going to be a much more important component. Uh, ah, OK, uh, just a, a zoom on the A8. This is the, the photo of the A8. I already told you almost everything. I just want to show you a picture of uh, the die. OK, this is the microprocessor. So just to show you what are the main components? So the main components are these two ones. The, you have a dual core CPU. Okay, this is the A8. So it's a few generations ago. A dual core CPU. Okay, and then you have a quad core GPU. The GPU is a graphics processing unit. So typically, it's the unit that is used to uh, let's say to process the graphics um, mainly for for let's say animations and and uh, video games okay it's a large one this is the internal cache okay the count of transistor is 2 billion here okay and the size is something like 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter So still, uh, it's a very, let's say, aggressive uh, microprocessor. But things have changed a lot since then. I, I, I got one. I, I found one picture of the A12. This is the A12. So uh, let's say that 
there are some things that are interesting here. Of course, uh, uh, there's this company which is called uh, um, it is called the Tech Insights. You 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 can you can look at uh, at it on, on 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 the web. They basically uh, let's say um, open everything, and they also open the, the the chip, and then they remove the glue and try to to make. Uh, uh, images of the whole uh, of the whole chip. So I mean, this appears to be scratchy because it is scratchy. They have uh, removed uh, everything that was glued upon. But I want to to uh, show you a thing. Of course, you have a, on the top you have four gigabyte of DRAM, so a large die of DRAM, and then here you have six CPUs. Uh, six CPUs with different cores. Th this is something important. Actually, we also did some work on it, on the possibility of having, on the same electronic systems, fast cores and high-performance cores and low-power cores. So that you, if you have a very high uh, load, high computing load, you have to run a, a process which consumes a lot of computational capacity, you uh, fire up uh, the high performance cores. And then when you have a low load, you completely switch off the high performance core and you use some low power, low performance code cores that are good enough for the load that you have, but at least they consume very little power. And this is the solution that they're using. They have two big cores here and four low power cores here. And so the operating systems decides which core has to be used depending on the load. Okay. Then in addition to that, you have uh, four GPUs here for the graphics uh, uh, load. And then in addition to that, you have this neural engine. Uh, the neural engine is a uh, machine learning hardware, which is used for some... Uh, let's say, cognitive functions. No, what, what, uh, for example, the, the famous face ID, which, which used the face recognition. And the face recognition is implemented in hardware on this piece of silicon here, okay, in, in, in a part of the processor. By the way, it does not work. I mean, it <laughs> simply, I mean, I, I tried with my brother, and my brother is, uh, I mean, it's younger than me, but it's similar, and uh, I mean, it does not work with us. It simply, <laughs> simply does not work. It's four years younger than me. We're not twins, but still, it does not work. So, this at least for the X, for for the for the for the X, uh, the previous one, let's say. So, and uh, so we are going to 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 have a look at the architectures of, of this uh, GPU and and. Neural engine, not this particular architecture, because I don't, don't know what is this particular architecture, but at least how these are made in, in general. The size is relatively uh, uh, unchanged. It's uh, something like 9 by 9, again, millimeters, so it's more or less the same size. But the number of transistors is, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, increase, uh, increased uh, sharply. It's close to 7 billion transistors. Okay? Uh, so, things are changing rapidly. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I, I already anticipated this is going to be easy. Now, today is going to be easy. Now, for, from uh, next time, we are going into the details by, and we are going to be much more quantitative. Of course, I'm not going to, uh, um, let's say, discuss in the detail every, the, the, the implementation of the actual chips. What I'm going to stress is, uh, uh, case by case, the main, uh, uh, let's say, principle of operation of the different blocks and, uh, and uh, the, the, the main concepts that you need to understand and to, to remember. So, uh, but still we are going to use, uh, let's say, uh, equations and, uh, and uh, uh, calculations. Uh, so now only, today only <laughs> photographs and pictures, 
uh, from next lectures, equations, real equations. Okay, that's it for today.